So you want to get into 3D printing. Well, that's fantastic because 3D printing is awesome, but you're not sure where to start. You're like, oh my gosh, there's so much information out there. You know, what kind of 3D printer do I get? How do I get the software? Do I design stuff? Do I, what? Well, I'm here to help because I just got into 3D printing and I have researched a lot of this stuff. And so I had a bunch of questions when I was first getting started, like, you know, like what kind of 3D printer should I get and blah, 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 all this other stuff. And I did a bunch of research. And so what I want to do in this video is put all that information together and all those questions that I had. And you probably have a lot of the same questions. So watch this video. It's going to save you a lot of time if you want to get into 3D printing. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. Let's get right into it. First of all, what is 3D printing? Well, 3D printing is essentially where you have an automated machine and it will extrude melted plastic into a pre-programmed uh, pattern and it it just kind of squeezes it out this nozzle and it it basically builds your model or th your design it builds it up layer by layer which is just incredible and these are very thin layers most of the time so um, it can take a while basically you just have to sit there and, and watch the machine do what it does I mean you don't have to sit there but it is very mesmerizing you'll probably just be watching it for the first few prints because it's it's pretty cool so needless to say this is an amazing tool for creators and makers and people that need to design prototype parts for other uh, parts and parts and things and stuff and alrighty then. Now you're wondering, well, how do I get started? Well, you're going to need a 3D printer. You're going to need filament. You're going to need a computer. You're going to need slicer software and you're going to need um, CAD or computer aided design modeling software. Um, or you're going to just need to uh, download these files, these printable files from the internet. So things that you want to print. And we're going to talk about all that right now. Okay, so first of all, what is a good 3D printer? Well, that's a huge question because there are a lot of them out there. And fortunately, now they are very accessible to the consumer and the price has gone down a lot. Um, but what I'm going to say is the it seems like the two like most popular ones, like most popular beginner ones are, are the Creality Ender 3, which is around $200. And then the Creality CR10, which is around $400. Now, I would just seriously consider either of those because they have been around a while and they're they're well documented. Again, I'm not a 3D printer expert. I don't review 3D printers. There are plenty of great channels on YouTube that you can find all kinds of reviews, but I decided to go with the Creality CR10, which actually you can see in the background right there. And the reason for that is because it is well documented. Uh, there's a lot of tutorial videos. Um, a lot of helpful videos about the the CR10. It's also in a budget price range, so it's it's a right around $400. And the reason why I went with the CR10 instead of the Ender 3, which is another very popular uh, 3D printer, is because it's a little bit bigger, and it just I, I felt like if I went with the Ender 3, I might need to upgrade sooner um, than if I went with the CR10. But basically, to keep it simple, if you are looking for a beginner 3D printer, definitely check out the Creality Ender 3 and the Creality CR10. There are some other models, but those are probably the most popular Creality printers and they have a good reputation and if something doesn't work very well on them, you can bet there's a video out there explaining how to fix it and make it better. So maybe you're still looking around and trying to find a 3D printer that is right for you and you're thinking, what do I even, what am I supposed to look for? Like what actually matters and, and what are some of the factors to think about when looking for a 3D printer? Well, the biggest one is going to be the build volume. And what that is, is essentially the, the area of the build plate, the surface on which the 3D printer is going to print the model. And that's multiplied by the height that it can print. And so you essentially have basically like a, you know, an imaginary rectangular volume. And the build volume is really just going to matter depending on what you want to print. If you want to print little tiny things, figurines or sort of like flat parts or something, you don't really need a printer that's very tall. But if you want to print something very tall, you're gonna need a tall printer. And if you want to print um, a lot of flat 
things and a lot of things at, at one time, you're gonna want a printer that has a, a uh, larger build area. So the build plate itself is actually larger, which means that the actual footprint of the printer is going to be larger and it's gonna take up more space in your studio. So that is going to be a factor there. Another really big factor is how plug and play do you want this printer to be? Are you willing to take some time to kind of tinker around with it and test out different different settings to get it to print just right? Or do you want something that's like right out of the box? You don't have to do hardly anything with it or it's fully assembled. You're gonna pay more money for something that is ready to go and requires less kind of tinkering. Most budget options will come uh, partially assembled or you might have to like assemble kind of the whole thing sort of as a kit. Another big question that I had is how do I start designing 3D prints, like what is, what's that process like? Well, what you do is you get an idea in your noggin and then once you have that, you get a computer aided design or CAD modeling software so that you can actually build this three dimensional model. And then what you do is you take it from there and you export it. And usually when you export it, it'll be like a .stl file and you import that into a slicer. And then in the slicer, you export it from the slicer and it's usually a .g code file. And then what you're gonna do is put that on an SD card and then take that SD card and stick it into your 3D printer. And then you go into your 3D printer, the little settings menu thing. And then you say print from SD card and then you select that file and then you go and then it just prints it like magic. Now, you might be wondering, well, what software do I use to actually design the thing that I want to design? Well, that's a great question. I would start with Tinkercad. Tinkercad is this free modeling software that uses basic shapes um, that you can like connect to each other and move around. And you really do a lot of different stuff with Tinkercad, even though some people say, oh, Tinkercad is only for babies. And that's kind of true. It is sort of designed to be kid friendly and something that, uh, that is very easy to pick up on and very intuitive, which is why I like it. And I think you should give it a try unless you're just like a genius. And then you should just jump right into Fusion 360 because that seems to be what um, the, what is the go-to uh, CAD modeling software for like real deal type of stuff, Fusion 360, but it there's definitely a learning curve, like a much bigger learning curve into Fusion 360. So uh, I would say start with Tinkercad and just try out some try out some different stuff and see, you know, test things out with your 3D printer. Just start with some uh, simple, you know, simple designs. And Tinkercad and Fusion 360 can be downloaded uh, for free. What the heck is a slicer? A slicer, you'll hear people talk about a slicer very often. And does that mean you slice something like vegetables? No, it's not like that at all. So a slicer is a type of software that you that you take your, your 3D uh, you know model, your design that you created, and you put it into the slicer. You import it into the slicer software. And uh, the most common one is gonna be Cura, Cura, C-U-R-A. And what that does is it allows you to change all of the different parameters for your 3D printer. So you can change how dense you want the print to be. You can change basically how it's going to print. You can uh, make duplicates of the of the print if you want to print multiple things um, in in one you know printing session. Um, so you can change so many parameters and change how uh, the model is printed. And not only is this uh, very handy, but it, a, lot, a lot of times it's critical because if you're printing with a different type of material, you'll need to print at a hotter temperature. Um, you might need to print more slowly. And so what this does is this is where you change all of the settings um, for your 3D printer and you tell your 3D printer how to print the model that you've created. Now you're thinking, okay, well that's cool, but like there's a lot of software to learn how to use and like I don't know how to use this stuff. Well, that's okay. Take a look at the description of this video. I'm going to have links to the other channels and videos that have really helped me because I'm nowhere near the level that these guys are at because this is just what they do. They do 3D printing stuff. So uh, some really popular channels are going to be uh, Maker's Muse, uh, Make Anything, uh, Chep, or Chuck Hellebuck's channel. In those videos, you can learn how to use Cura, you can learn how to use Tinkercad, Fusion 360, all kinds of different stuff. So definitely check that out. But Adam, what if I don't want to design my own prints? What if I just want to print stuff that other people have designed? Well, no problem. All you need to do is go to a website like Thingiverse. Thingiverse has a bunch of things that people have designed and uploaded into the Thingiverse website. And you can just 
find whatever you need. Maybe it's a GoPro mount. Maybe it's a, a flower pot. Maybe it's, I don't, anything, just anything. You can go in there and you can download it. And then usually um, you'll get like a uh, STL file and there might be several different types of files that, that you know, come as like the whole package because uh, maybe somebody broke up the print into different sections or whatever. But basically then what you do is you take that file and you import it into your slicer software because you still need to, need to get a G code file for your printer. So what you do is you import that file that you downloaded into your slicer software like Cura and then you can change all the settings that you need to for your specific printer and then you can export it from your slicer into that .g code file, put it on an SD card, and then put it in your printer, and you are ready to print. Well, this all sounds pretty good, but does this take a lot of time and trial and error to actually get good 3D prints? Well, basically, yes, but it depends. Again, if you're getting a budget printer, it will require a little bit more setup, um, maybe a little bit more you know, oversight on your oversight expect to have prints fail especially your first ones when you're kind of getting your 3d printer dialed in um, the good news is there's a lot of videos out there that are very helpful in diagnosing certain types of printing problems once you get it dialed in it's going to work for you very consistently afterwards so for me in my case with my cr10 it took a little bit, like I printed a bunch of these little test prints before I actually got to the settings that I kind of liked and seemed to work for me. Do 3D printers have fumes? Well, that's a good question. It depends on what you're printing with. It depends on the material because essentially what you're doing is you're taking this plasticky type of material, this filament, and you're heating it up. And so when you heat stuff up, like it tends to, you know, kind of release gases and that sort of thing. With some prints, there definitely will be fumes that you want to avoid, like ABS. So PLA for the PLA that I've been printing, uh, no, nah, I don't really notice anything. Um, you know, and I'm not dead, so I think everything works fine. I think it would depend on how hot you are printing. But whatever room that you're keeping your 3D printer in, you want it to be, you know, well ventilated and you probably don't want to be like, you know, sitting over top of the 3D printer breathing the whole time. Are 3D printers loud or how loud are they? Well, I haven't used a decibel meter on my CR10, but it's actually quieter than I thought that it would be based on what I'd seen in YouTube videos. It's fairly quiet. It's mostly just the fan, you know, cooling down all of the electronics, what makes it loud. It's loud enough to be annoying, but quiet enough to be ignored. Now, that's the 3D printer, but you can't 3D print unless you have something to print with, and that, my friends, is called the filament. And there's a few things to know about filaments, so let's get into that right now. What is filament? I hear people talking about filament. Filament is just like plasticky type of stuff. It's whatever kind of material that you're going to be using to print with and it comes on a big spool and it kind of looks like uh, spaghetti noodles or something like that. And that is what you feed into your 3D printer, it goes down to the nozzle, down to the hot end, what they call the hot end, the part that heats up the plastic or the material and it melts it. And that is the filament. Now, let's briefly discuss some of the most popular type of filament materials out there and why you might want to use them or not use them. And also like, what are those? PLA is the most common material. It's basically just like a plasticky type of material. It's pretty strong, but it's not necessarily intended for structural purposes. It does not hold up to heat very well and it does not do well under sustained loads. It tends to kind of bend um, and flex when under sustained loads, even though it is very rigid but after a while, it will just kind of bend under a load. But it is very easy to print. It is commonly available. It's relatively cheap and it's very forgiving to print with. And it's really plenty strong for most applications. But if you want something that you're going to keep like in a hot car, like on a dashboard or something, probably should not print it with PLA because it will melt is what I'm told. I haven't actually tested that out, but everybody says it's just gonna melt. TPU, what the heck is TPU stand for? I don't know, but I'll tell you what, TPU is the flexible stuff. If you wanna print like a GoPro mount, 
or uh, mo- uh, soft soft mount your quadcopter motors or anything that is that requires like a squishy flexible material you want tpu and tpu comes in all kinds of different uh, hardness levels so like from like super duper squishy to where like you just squish it but just like like nothing to where it's like mostly rigid but like it'll still flex um, what i'm using is uh sane smart um, TPU that seems to work very well and actually drone mesh has a good video talking about the properties of the Sane smart uh, TPU and why he likes it and that's actually the reason why I bought the Sane smart stuff but TPU and flexible filaments are de- are generally more difficult to print than a, uh, a more rigid filament like PLA and the reason is because like it's all just kind of like flexible and, and noodly so it's harder to to feed that into the hot end and then a lot of times you'll also get like really bad stringing depending on how your settings are for your your slicer settings um, because it just kind of wants to ooze all over the place so uh, generally like the more uh, squishy the filament is the more difficult it is to actually print well um, and so you're really going to have to tweak around with the settings. For the, the Sane Smart brand TPU that I've been using has been super great so far it's like I've gotten a little bit of stringing um, but generally it's very, very easy to print with. And I've only had to change a few settings um, specifically for the flexible material in the slice in, in my slicer in Cura. ABS, you probably are familiar with ABS plastic. Oftentimes it's used in like injection molded. Um, ABS is, is good because it's strong. Um, it resists heat well. So basically it's really durable. The thing is it's not very easy to print and it needs to be basically like in an enclosed kind of box in order to keep the, the overall air temperature higher because what it will tend to do is kind of split and um, and warp if, if one part doesn't cool uh, evenly with the rest of the the print. It also has bad fumes that you want to avoid. Uh, my understanding is that ABS is actually being phased out with, for a material called ASA. And ASA is like ABS, but it's, I guess, a little bit more forgiving to uh, work with, to print with, and I think a little bit less of the fume. So it's basically like a new and improved version of ABS. And lastly, PETG, or PETG, as it's sometimes called, is a really cool material and actually as of right now I have not printed with it I have a spool sitting right here that I need to test out but what's cool about PETG it is kind of like a middle ground between uh, ABS and PLA so it is more heat resistant than PLA um, but it's much easier to print than ABS or, or ASA so it's more durable than PLA it tends to bend rather than snap right away um, but maybe not as durable as ABS or ASA. So I think I'm going to be trying this out and it's probably going to be my go-to for when I want something that is stronger than PLA but still easy to print with. So now you're wondering, well, what kind of filament should I use? Should I use hard filament? Should I use uh, flexible filament? You know, what should I use? Well, let me just tell you, basically start with PLA. PLA is the most popular type of 3D printing filament out there. It's very forgiving, it's easy to print with, it's cheap. So I would start with PLA and then uh, do a bunch of test prints on your printer and just kind of get a, get a feel for it, get a feel for how that handles. And then once you get comfortable with that, maybe move on to the other stuff that you want to print like flexible, one, uh, flexible materials or uh, structurally stronger materials. What size filament do I need? And does it need to be a specific brand? Well, no, it does not need to be a specific brand. Uh, Usually you'll find a brand that you like or that works best for your printer and that's what you'll use. As far as the size, 1.75 millimeters is the most common type of filament and you can check your 3D printer manufacturer specifications and it will say what type of filament you should use for your 3D printer. But 1.75 millimeter is going to be the most common. So how much filament should I buy? Like, does this stuff get get used up super fast or like, what's the deal? Well, um, it's like I said, it's sold in like one kilogram spools usually, and that's probably gonna last you like quite a while. So like, for example, the little test prints that I've printed out that are very, very common test prints, uh, the little benchy boat, they call it the bench boat, um, that weighs about 10 grams. And so for a one kilogram spool, you would be able to print about a hundred benchy boats. 
with that. So that's quite a bit, that's quite a bit. So it's gonna last you a while. So how much does this filament cost? Well, filament is usually around uh, like $25 for about a kilogram that's sold by weight. And so it's usually around $25 in that air in that range and that's for like PLA but if you want a specialty type of filament then you might be paying twice as much uh, usually about half a kilogram for that same kind of $25 range but Adam what should I print first there's so many options here's what you should do you should go to Thingiverse or someplace like that and download a test print something like the the benchy boat the, the bench boat is very common thing and the reason why this is important is because you want to test out your uh, your well your slicer settings and you want to test out the operation of your printer before you move on to your piece de resistance and you know because you don't want to be like designing something and then you know trying to print it and then you're not sure like is it my design or is it my printer or what's going on and so when you print a known item like the bench boat it allows you to compare yours to what other people have and so you might be getting some sort of common issue that other people are getting and then it will be much easier to figure out what is going on with your printer and, and, and seeing you know what prints well, what doesn't print well and that sort of thing. And then once you get good results with a test file, then you can move on to your piece of resistance that you have designed so lovingly and carefully. All right, well, I hope this was helpful to you if you are just getting into 3D printing, because let me tell you, it is totally worth it. I have waited years, I think, to actually get into 3D printing, because I was like looking at it and I was like, oh man, that looks really cool, but you know, I don't know, and blah, 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 blah. Well, finally did, pulled the trigger, and I bought the Creality CR10 and some filament and now I'm gonna be testing out different types of filaments and I am just so excited because it is such a cool tool where you can take an idea that's in your noggin and then you can create something. Basically 3D printing is the future. So if you're going to get into 3D printing, welcome to the future. This has been fun, thanks for watching. Leave me a comment with any questions that you have about 3D printing or your 3D printing tips for beginners. We'd love to hear them. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again very soon. All right then, see you next time. This is gonna take a long time to edit. I just have to remind myself of that. This is gonna take, <laughs> this could take a while.